Happy prototyping everyone! In this tutorial video, I will try to quickly explain how Meltdown and Spectra are working. Meltdown and Spectra are hardware attacks of modern CPUs. I will first explain how Meltdown is working and then I will explain how Spectra is working. Meltdown is using two mechanisms of modern CPU. The first mechanism it's using is out of order execution. And the second mechanism it's using is the cache. The problem is how you can use this mechanism to actually get data that you are not able to read otherwise. In modern CPUs, the RAM is actually split in multiple sections. In the nutshell, you can tell there's a kernel section. The kernel section can only be accessed via privileged uh, processes when the CPU is switched into kernel mode. And then we have the user space where all memory for the process is stored. And actually, the, this is not a physical address, but the CPU is actually mapping the address. So there's, there's a table where each virtual address is mapped over this table to a physical address. So if in the user program you access a certain memory address, it's actually converted to a physical address. And if you try to access kernel data in your user program, you are not allowed because in, in the address mapping table, there is a bit uh, which is set by the kernel that you have no, you're not allowed to access this data. In modern operating system like Linux, Microsoft or Mac OS, each, each program has its own translation table. And in the translation table, the whole, normally the whole kernel space is mapped for each program. So that when there is, is a switch between user mode and kernel mode, for example, when you run some function from operating system, the content switch will be faster. So this is, but this is no problem normally, because if you access kernel memory, you will get an exception and nothing happens. What Meltdown is doing is using uh, a racing condition which they only detected in Intel processors. So AMD and ARM processors are, are not affected by this, by this problem. But in Intel processors, there can, it can happen that there will be a racing condition. This is from the paper of Meltdown, and here is, is the main code of the attack. And what the attack is really doing, it's loading from an address one byte and this address is actually in the in the kernel space so this should raise an exception but because of out of order execution the cpu is needing some time till it can decide that this is actually an address it's not allowed to to read data from so the execution will go on for some steps until the cpu actually make the racing condition and in the next step, what is happening, this bit is used to actually make another memory access. And this memory access is really smart. So there's a, a, a big chunk of memory and the actual data is used. The data, what is calculated from the memory of the kernel space, is used as, as in the address to access another, to access this chunk of memory. So depending on the value, the system will access one or another chunk. So this is actually the second part what is Melton using is, is the cache ch side channel attack. So after this was uh, was executed, there will be an exception and the, the kernel will take over the operating system. It will clear all registers and make a crash report. And for example, the program can catch it, and when the program catched it, it can later try to, to, to continue. And this is one possibility how to use this exploit. You, you will catch the exception, and then the program is trying to access the cache. And this is a cache side channel attack. So you can measure how long the system needs to access memory. And if the memory is already cached, the access will be much quicker than if the memory is not cached. So when we look at these two memory region and try to see if it's cached or not, we can from that we can reconstruct if which value was in the register RB and therefore which value was loaded from, from the kernel space. 
So this is how Melton is working in a nutshell. They actually find another problem in the Intel CPU, which allowed to execute one instruction without an exception. There are some instructions which can be uh, utilized parallelly, and if one access in a parallel ex uh, instruction is from kernel space, the CPU will actually not will actually not process the value, but it will still make the memory access. So you can still retrieve over the over the side channel attack from the cache what the memory content was. So this is actually completely independent of the operating system of the programs are running. So it's 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 a hardware bug, and therefore what what normally uh, modern operating systems are doing in in kernel space they map the whole physical memory. So you can read out everything over this attack. The good uh, thing about that is the only stuff we have to fix is that the, the operating system in kernel mode just is not allowed to map all memory in the memory table, in the memory mapping table. So this can be actually really easily fixed. Uh, there will be some performance loss because every time the program from user space is, is switching into kernel space, the memory mapping table have to re be replaced. So there's actually some bug fixes out there for Linux and I think for Microsoft. So this meltdown problem will actually be fin uh, soon fixed. Now you're thinking, yeah, actually why it's not working with uh, AMD or ARM? Because um, this racing condition, you can see there, there have to be like two or three instruction after the one instruction which is actually not allowed to make it possible to, to retrieve the data over the cache side channel attack. So this is actually, it, it was not to be reported that it's possible with other CPUs than Intel. So this is how Meltdown is working. Spectra is another beast. And what Spectra actually is doing, it's, it's focusing on the branch prediction algorithm. Uh, what is branch prediction? Branch prediction means that the modern CPUs try to understand which, which uh, part of a function will be executed. For example, if, if you have an if instruction and you have two possible outcomes, then every time in the program flow, the CPU will try to guess which which instruction will be executed after the branch. F for sure, uh, it's just the guess. And so sometimes it's, it's, it's right and sometimes it's wrong. And with some heuristics, for example, counting how much, how often one branch is taken and, and uh, what was going on in the last attempts to do that, this is actually really good. In, in normal cases, in normal program flows, I think it's up to 90% to make the right prediction. So what, what someone can do is actually try to fool the branch prediction logic. So you can write a program which is simulating a branch, what actually is existing in another program, and try to train this, this branch to, to take the wrong turn. So if I try to train, for example, that an if in another program will take the wrong turn, then I can do this when that in the way that I simulate the branch in in my own program with the with the right uh, with the exact same address. So and then uh, when the other program I want to target that make a wrong turn, for example, this can have some side effects. For example, there can also be a memory lookup, or there can be other channel others other information that that will not be be cleared or will not be restored after after a switch, a context switch from one program to another. Uh, so one possible side channel will be also cache. So if for example, the target program has a branch and in this branch, there will be a memory access and then the content switch is happening. I can, for example, also, I can also try to make a cache side channel attack, a cache timing attack, and therefore find out what what really happened when, when the program was taking the wrong branch. Here is an example exploit from Spectre. And what's actually happen, happen here is that we have a secret and the secret is never read in all of our code. The only position we use secret is to calculate the offset 
to access it indirectly. So this is a demo exploit which exploits Spectra and I will quickly uh, tell how it is working. It's the same idea from Meltdown. You have one array which is used to be loaded into the cache and the actual value you want to read is the value of the position of x, so indirectly. So if, if I put something in here what is actually not allowed or it's much bigger than the array, array 1, then it will read from another part of the memory and because this array is defined before our secret, we can have a positive offset and then we can actually read the character from the sentence. So this is actually the idea behind this. This is a sound code. So there is an if which actually prevents us from using an out of boundary exception. So out of boundary exploit. So when you normally pass a value for X and there will nothing will happen because this if is actually not executed and the access to, to a variable what is not in our scope will actually not happen. So what Spectre is using here, it, it's first, it's, it's calling this function over and over again. This is happening here. You see like in the comments, you see there are five training runs to train the branch protection network. And after that, we will run it like another 25 times to, to be sure that we hit it once and that the racing condition, and this is what's happening here, are out of order execution. So the CPU is not able to predict, to, to say if, if, it's, if it's legal to go inside this if or not. So it, it will try to predict it. And because we make some training runs, it, it will in the next run with, with our malicious X, which is out of boundary, it will also jump into the if. And it will try to, to compute the array access and when it recognized that okay actually this branch was not taken so it will redo the last operations but what already is what already happened is that the second array access the second array access uh, caused a cache load so one chunk of array 2 is already loaded into the cache so what is happening in the next test step uh, there will be timing analysis to to check if the data actually was cached or not and so we can read this secret for example or an arbitrary uh, RAM position which this program can access and this is how Spectrum is working so if you imagine for example you have a browser and your program is, is running in a sandbox this is actually no problem because with that the program can access data outside of the sandbox. But you can see this is, is, is this really not concrete. So it's, it's an exploit which is really hard to use and I think it will take some time till there will be some sophisticated some sophisticated stuff that, that will be based on, on Spectra. But the problem here is that, that this is actually memory independent. So even if the two processes have in the memory map table, no memory to share, this will still work. So uh, it's nearly impossible to patch. And uh, we will see in modern CPUs what they're doing. For example, what they can do is they can also save the state of the branch prediction logic if, if a state switch happens from one process to the other and to try to fix that, for example. Or they can turn off branch prediction altogether. But if you turn off branch prediction, you will lose so much performance. So it's actually not a possible options. So we will follow. I think it will be interesting to follow the development on the second attack vector. Yeah, that's all I can say about Meltdown and Spectra. Bye.